Hi, welcome to another video on Mac 4. During this video, I'm going to try and explain in most simplest terms how a coroutine works. To do this, I'm going to um, use, use a dummy button up here by the DROs. And I'm going to make a little command that moves my X and Y access to a certain position on the machine. And, well, let's just see what happens. So the first thing to do, I'm going to go into my screen editor. Select the button I want to use. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to move my X and Y to the centre of the table. Now, fictitiously, I'm going to pretend I've got a 200 by 200 table. So, I'm going to move with the G code command. Execute that one, I do. And we'll give it our instance. And I'm going to move my X to 100 and my Y to 100 and I'm even going to make it so I don't get an error that's about that right, now after that let's inform whoops, go away whoops, I didn't mean that as in go away, go away right, let's inform the user we've finished so, message box Simple, yeah, finished. If I can remember how to spell it, that'll do. Great, complete. Let's come out the editor. You'll have to excuse my sniffles. Of course, it's a week away from Christmas and I'm getting a cold. So enable our machine, press the button. Oh, so we've got a message box come up that says finished, although our DROs are still, still going. Right, I know how to fix that. Quite simple. Let's go in the screen editor, same button. And we're gonna stick a weight on the end there. We've got another command called MC control G code execute weight. So now is what's gonna happen is we're gonna execute the G code but the GUI is not going to move on. It's not going to do our message box until Mac4 has finished executing that command. Great. Let's go forth and do it. Go forth. Uh, so let's enable our machine. Zero them back off again. Let's move to the centre. Oh, what's happened there now? Um... According to Mac 4, it's not responding. Oh, but we finished and our DROs have not moved. The screen's not updated. Oh, there we are. Now it's updated. So we've blocked the GUI. The GUI doesn't work because it's been told to wait until the G code has finished running. And it's not very nice when you lock the GUI up because it can become unresponsive if you start clicking your mouse about all over the place. Now this is where coroutines come in handy. So let's try and explain what a coroutine is. So this is the piece of code that we want to run and this is our Mac 4 GUI. Now in an ideal world, multi-threading, we should be able to run these pieces of code, the code we actually want, and the GUI side by side. So from start to finish, that's how the application would work. Now Lua is not a multi-threading program. So we've got a GUI which contains Lua and we've got our code that contains Lua. And the way it works when we execute the program it has to run in a single instance. So the code gets run 
before it hands back to the GUI. So this is where coroutines come in. Let's take our code and we're going to change this into a coroutine. So how does a coroutine work? Well, first off, let's look at our GUI. Now our GUI's got a PLC running in the background. So from the beginning, it runs it. And once it's got to the end, it starts again. And this is continuously looping in the background of the GUI. Now if we originally run the code, we would break that loop within the middle, causing the GUI to pause. A coroutine will execute the code in chunks. So let's say our code here has four chunks. The first thing it's going to do, it's going to execute the first chunk. And as you can see, while it's running that first chunk, the GUI loop physically paused. That's where you get your unresponsive Mac 4 screen. Now look at our coroutine. It's not gone any further. So basically it's paused. Now when it's paused, it's in coroutines, it's basically what's classed as suspended. So somewhere in our GUI loop, we need to tell that coroutine to resume. Now we can resume our coroutine from our PLC, our loop. But whilst it does send that coroutine resume, now our GUI is also going to stop the PLC whilst our coroutine runs the next one. But this happens so fast you would never notice at all. Now once the last chunk of the code has been run, our coroutine comes as what um, is classed as dead. It, it's no longer functional. You cannot resume it again. You'll get an error if you try and resume um, a coroutine that is dead. So, you know, physically that is how a coroutine works. So let's go and write a coroutine now for the commands that we tried earlier. So back in Mac 4, I'm going to go back to my screen editor and go to the button which I wanted to use for centering and I'm going to create a coroutine for these two pieces of code. Two pieces, two lines of code. Now to create a coroutine we have to give it a name and we do that from the beginning. So our C table is going to be our coroutine. So straightforward, we're going to do a coroutine dot create. And that's how we create it. But we're going to create a function. A little bit different to if you've looked at the reference all home coroutine. It's going to be slightly different. So we'll create a function here. And then we'll just do an end. And we'll drop that down there. So what do we want to do in our coroutine? Co well, we want to do this line here. Now, if we were to do a coroutine with G-code execute wait written inside it, it wouldn't be any different to what we had before because Mac 4's API will do the wait for you. So we're going to change that back down to the G code execute we had before. And I'm even going to add our G00 there. Very bad not to put that in the first place. So we've created a coroutine. So what do we, what do we want to do? 
Well, we want to run that. Now, to run a coroutine, we actually send it a command called yield, which physically, you know, yield the coroutine. <coughs> but after the coroutine is started or finished, is what we want to do is add in this message box. So let's put that in there. quickly highlight these out before I forget. Now that is our coroutine. Now the first time you run that coroutine, it will not run any of that G code. As soon as this coroutine starts, it will be started up in a suspended state. Now that's our button code. As we saw earlier, we're going to need to put something in our PLC script to make that resume. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit here because there's not many ways of doing this. So we might as well use what's already in here. If I can remember where it is there. So I'm going to copy that. In fact, I'm going to Copy a bit at the top as well. And I'm going to stick this down the bottom here. So we've got to change these weights. Let's because the name of our coroutine is C table. So we'll quickly change them. And one down there. So what is this, um, yeah we'll just change that to C table. So what is this actually doing? Well if I start at the beginning, it's going to look for anything that's been declared as C table. Now if we don't press the button, when it runs through the PLC, there is no C table, so it's nil you know, it doesn't exist. So this is looking for if the C table is not equal to nil and our max state is idle, then we'll do what's in between here. Now the state of a coroutine, there are three states that are running, there are suspended and dead. So we're getting a state here of the C table and if it's suspended, then we're going to resume the C table. You can even put that the other way around if you like. If the state is not equal to dead, you, you know, you can do it that way, then resume the C table. Now this is the bit where it's bouncing backwards and forwards between the GUI and the coroutine until it gets to that state is dead. So let's go and have a look what will happen if we run that same piece of code now. Let's just zero these back out. So same piece of code and as you can see our DROs are now running and we should get our message box now. And that's it. That is how a coroutine works. Well, I hope that's made coroutines a little bit simpler for you to understand and not blocking the GUI. So until the next video, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And if you don't hear from me before then, Happy New Year.